الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبعد الحمد لله يا إخوان we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for allowing us to come together another year in these tremendous beneficial summer programs in which we read from the works of the ulama of al-Islam and study together from the kitab and the sunnah. And this year, walillah alhamd ikhwan, we are reading Mat'usul Sitta, the six fundamental principles of Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala. Today, Akhwan, inshallah ta'ala, I will be reading from the second point, the second principle in the book. And for those of you who have the translation, please have it available with you as we read along, inshallah ta'ala. And we explain, bi-ithnillahi ta'ala, these tremendous principles. Al-asl al-thani. Amal Allah bil ijtima' fi al-deen wa naha an al-tafarruq fihi. He begins by stating, Yikhwan, that Allah has commanded the people to be united in the religion, and he has prohibited separation therein. فَبَيَّنَ اللَّهَ هَذَا بَيَانًا شَافِيًا تَفْهَمُهُ الْعَوَامُ وَنَهَانَ أَنْ نَكُونَ كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا قَبْلَنَا فَهَلَكُوا And then he mentions, Yikhwan, in this tremendous point, Allah be with Allah explained this clearly and adequately in a way that even the common people could understand. And this is important, Ikhwan, as we will discuss momentarily. He likewise forbade us from splitting and differing like those who came before and thus were destroyed. Now, I will primarily be reading Ikhwan today from the explanation of the noble Sheikh Al-Allama, Sheikh Muhammad Aman Al-Jami, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and bi ta'ala, we will add benefits as we see fit. As for the statement, ikhwan, in the metin, in the text, Amr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bil ijtima' Shaykh Muhammad Aman al-Jami, he says, rahimahullah, amran sarihan, wa naha an tafarruq nahyan sarihan. He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly commanded with unity. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly commanded with unity and has clearly prohibited separation in the religion. Now this ikhwan al-Bidifiqum is a tremendous statement that this is not a statement with ambiguity. This is not a statement ikhwan al-Bidifiqum of generalization. It is a clear-cut, concrete statement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a prohibition of separating. And he says, this is clearly stated by qawlihi ta'ala, wa'atasimu bi habalillah jami'ah. And this is clearly stated in the, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Allah's statement, and hold on all of you together to the rope of Allah. Hold on all of you together to the rope of Allah from Surah Ali Imran, ayat number 103. Wa ibara sariha. And look what the Shaykh says again, reiterating this point, ikhwan. This is an explicit expression. This is a clear statement. And hold on all of you together to the rope of Allah. And anyone who understands the Arabic language can understand this statement. Even from the common folk, if they're able to understand the very basics of the Arabic language, that they can understand the meaning of this statement, hold on all of you together to the rope of Allah. The shahad, the highlighting point is its simplicity. Its simplicity, and to the point where Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah clarifies in the point that this is a statement that even the common folk can understand. And he said after this, Ikhwan, Shaykh Muhammad Amal al-Jami, rahimahullah ta'ala, wa'atasimu bi habalillah, ay bi deenillah. 
Hold on all of you together to the rope of Allah, meaning the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa bi kitab Allah. And the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we will see momentarily in the tafsir of some of the ulama of Islam, that the meaning of the habal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rope of Allah, is the Quran. That is the Quran, the book of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. And he mentions that, that is ikhwan, wa bima ja'a bihi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that which the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. That is the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ikhwan. It is the religion of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. It is the Quran. It is the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he mentions that, that is ikhwan, rahimahallahu ta'ala, wa ma'a thalik qad yahduth ikhtilafi ba'd al-masal al-far'iyya. And with that, Ikhwan, he said, you may find some differing in subsidiary matters. You may find some differing in subsidiary matters. We'll talk about that momentarily. And this is, Ikhwan, what they call a divergence of opinions. A divergence of opinions based on yani the different wordings or different actions that can be found in the Quran and the Sunnah. We'll explain what is intended there momentarily. So he said that this ikhwan abri fikum fal ma'na wahid a wa'tasimu bima ja'a bihi Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, and therefore, ikhwan, the meaning of this is what? Hold on all of you together to that which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad came with from the Quran and the Sunnah. Now, as for the issue, ikhwan, of as I said, that divergence of opinion or divergence of text. Some of the ulama have explained, ikhwan, that what is intended here, منهما يكون كل واحد من القولين والفعلين مشروعا كما في القراءات التي اختلف فيها الصحابة وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كلاكما محسن Now this, ikhwan, as some of the mashaykh have mentioned, is when, for example, ikhwan, there are two different actions or two different statements, but both of them have been legislated. Now he says, in this instance, there may be a differing. Now listen to what some of the scholars have mentioned Ikhwan and Ibn Mas'ud. Now they bring the narration of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. They bring the narration of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Sami'atu rajulan qara ayatan wa sami'atu nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqra'u akhlafaha. He said, I heard a man recite an ayah from the Quran and I heard the Prophet sallam, recite it differently. I heard a man recite an ayah from the Quran but I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recite it differently. So he says after this, Ikhwan, فَجِئَتُ بِهِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ So I took him to the Messenger of Allah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud took him to the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم فَأَخْبَرْتُهُ And I explained to him what had taken place. فَأَرَفْتُ فِي وَجِهِ الْكَرَاهِيَةِ And I saw the displeasure on his face. The displeasure from what, Ikhwan? Why was displeasure seen on the face of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم when this noble companion came to the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه Why did the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Displeasure upon his face. Who knows? Mustafa, Shandak. Ahsend. The Messenger of Allah was displeased with the differing between his companions. That his companions were differing even as it relates to that affair of Qira'a. This is important, Ikhwan Abir Fikum. وَقَالَ كِلَاكُمَا مُحْسِنْ Both of you have, are correct. Both of you are correct in that affair. And listen to this, Ikhwan, and this goes to the point that our brother just mentioned. وَلَا تَخْتَلِفُوا فَإِنَّ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ اِخْتَلَفُوا فَهَلَكُوا This goes back to the very point of Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, in the text. As we'll see momentarily, bin Allah Ta'ala, at the end of the point. At any rate, the Prophet ﷺ said, What, Ikhwan, do not differ. For indeed, those who came before you differed, and they were destroyed. Now, I mentioned this narration is on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Who collects the narration? Who collects this narration? Which of the ulama of al-hadith, ikhwan? Very well-known narration in the sunnah. Huh? Huh? Who collects it? Collects it in their book, in their work. Who? Mustafa. Yeah, Al Bukhari. 
خلاص البخاري خلاص البخاري في صحيح البخاري يا اخوان لا بالي فيكم <تصفيق> كيف؟ لا 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 في البخاري لا بالي فيكم يعني اذا ادرس اخوان حياكم الله and we return now اخوان to the kalam يعني الشيخ محمد امان الجامي رحمه الله تعالى ولا تفرقوا now, Ikhwan, I want to make a point before we move on to that, something that is very important as it relates to the issue of ikhtilaf tanawwi, as the Shaykh he mentions here, rahimahullahu ta'ala. And this is something that we understand, Ikhwan, from the, from the very well-known narration, sataftarik hadhi al-umma ala thalath wa sabi'ina firqa, that this ummah would divide into 73 different sects, kullaha fin nar illa wahida, all of them in the hellfire except for one. And when the companions, those noble companions, asked, wa ma tilka al-firqa, what did that save sect? The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said in one narration, Hil Jama'a. It is the Jama'a, the congregation. Now, in the wording of the Quran in the Sunan of Abi Dawood, we find in the explanation of Al Adim Abadi and Aun al Ma'bud, he mentions Iqwan that this ikhtilaf that is intended in the narration is in the matters of the usul of the religion, in the fundamental principles of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as, he, as it relates Iqwan to the affair of the Tawheed. As relates to the affair of the Tawheed. So those who differ with the people of Haq as it relates to the affairs of the Tawheed, then they are those who have separated into those 72 sects. And then he mentions Iqwan, those who differ with the people of Haq as it relates to a Nabuwa, prophethood, and messengership, then they are also from those who are included in the meaning of those who have separated into those 72 sects, yani those deviant sects. Also, he mentions Iqwan as it relates to the affairs of Muwalat al Sahaba. Our fealty and loyalty and love for the companions, those who differ with the people of truth in that regard, also Iqwan are included from those 72 sects that have deviated from the people of Haq. And he continues on. But he also mentions Iqwan in that explanation of the Sunan of Abi Dawood. He says, Iqwan, that this, what is not intended here are those who differ in these affairs, these subsidiary matters, these matters of fiqh, of which Iqwan, a person, they may, may find difference of opinion amongst the ulama based on some of the evidences. So for example, Ikhwan, we even have, Shaykh Wana Shaykh Mukbi used to mention this uh, yani quite often as it relates to the issue of whether or not when coming out of rukur, one makes qabd, puts his hands back on his chest, or makes irsal and puts them to the side. And the Shaykh, he mentioned the statement of Imam Ahmed, fihi sa'a. And it is room in this issue. And there's a difference of opinion amongst the scholars. This is not from those matters and issues of which we divide and separate between ourselves. This is not from those affairs as we find from Al Adim Abadi and as we mentioned from Shaykh Al Shaykh Muqbil as relates to that affair. So, therefore, Ikhwan Abid Fikum, as we mentioned as it relates to the issue, Ikhwan of Ikhtilaf here, what is intended, Allah Abid Fikum, is in those matters of the usul, the fundamental principles in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam, Imam Abu Dawood, what's his name? Every year I do this. What's his name, huh? Suleiman ibn Ash'af Sijistani. Allah be with you. Hayakum Allah, ya Ikhwan. Wala tafarraku. And do not divide. Do not separate. And listen to what Shaykh Muhammad Aman al Jami says. Al Jumlat al Thaniya tafsir. Al Jumlat al Ula. That the second clause here, do not differ, is a tafsir, explication, explanation for the first clause. Which is what? And Allah commanded with ijtima' wa'atasimu bi habalillah. Yani, unite or join together upon the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La tafarruku fi deen. Do not differ in the, in the religion. And again, as we said, ikhwan, this is in the usul of the religion of Islam. La takunu firaqan wa hizaban wa jama'at. Do not become sects and parties and schisms. Do not become sects and parties. And schisms. Shaykh Muhammad Aman al Jami, he continues, He says, This ikhwan is a command that clearly calls to unity. Clearly calls to unity. And a prohibition that explicitly warns against dividing and warns against separating. And listen to this ikhwan. Now this ikhwan is an important point. 
He said, and with the fact that they you know, have this clear prohibition in the kitab, clear, clear prohibition يعني, from separating and dividing in the, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, clear prohibition in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from يعني, separating and dividing, a clear command to unite upon the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and with that you, feel, you still find many who contend with these clear commandments and prohibitions. You still find those, ikhwan, who find fault, ikhwan, with those who unite upon the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the kitab and the sunnah. And this, ikhwan, abid fikum, is something that reminds us of what Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi, he mentions, ikhwan, in his explanation of Sharh al-Sunnah al-Imam al-Barawahari. Here we have, ikhwan, as it relates to the affair of al-Qadr, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many verses in the Quran, ikhwan, as it relates to the establishment of the divine decree of Allah Taala. How many? How many ahadith, how many narrations in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam establishing belief in the divine decree of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, khayrihi wa sharrihi, the good of it and the bad of it. How many narrations in the sunnah? Even Ikhwan, as Shaykh Ahmed Najmi mentioned, even before the revelation, we find from the people of Al-Jahili, Ikhwan, even they had a better understanding than, than the Qadriya. That when something would befall them from, from calamity or something good would, 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 would come to them, they would attribute it to what? To decree. Even the people of Jahiliyyah, better than the, the Qadri in that regard. Better than the, the Jabri in that regard, ya And with all of those evidences in the Quran, with all of those clear cut evidences in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in the Sunnah of the Prophet, still you find those who contend with those texts. How many narrations, Ikhwan? How many texts in the Book of Allah and in the Sunnah for the istiwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Some of the ulama have mentioned, Ikhwan, akthar min alf dalil. More than a thousand evidences as it relates to Allah's istiwa, Allah's ascension above his throne and his ulu, his loftiness above the heavens. Akthar min alf dalil min al Quran wa min al Sunnah. From the Quran, from the Sunnah, from the statements of the Sahaba, from the aqwal of the ulama, Ikhwan, after that. How many narrations, how many texts, even as the ulama mentioned from the sound aql, the sound intellect that has not been corrupted by tashwish, confusion and the likes of this from the people of innovation. How many texts do we have? How much evidence do we have? And still we find those who oppose and contend with those texts and evidences. As clear as it is, Ikhwan, as crystal clear as it is, Ikhwan, still you find from those who contend. So how much more, Ikhwan, those issues that are not so clear for some of the people as it relates to some of the callings of the people of Hizbiyah and the likes of this, Ikhwan. So be mindful of this. And thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance and we ask Allah for thabat, for firmness upon the kitab and the sunnah. And the Shaykh, he mentions, Ikhwan, still there are many of those who contend with these clear commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We find this by what? Bi ijad jama'at mutafarriqa wa intima'at mukhtalifa. Fa idha dhaqarta lahum haadhi al ayah, qalu al jama'at kulluha fi deen. And then you find, Ikhwan, as the Shaykh he says, all of this, yani, these individuals who contend with these clear commandments and clear prohibitions by forming these different groups and parties. And if you were to mention to them this very verse, these people who have separated themselves and divided themselves up into all these different groups and these different schisms and parties and the likes of this. If you were to mention for them, Ikhwan, this ayah, this clear ayah in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would say what? All of these groups are from the religion. All of these works are working in service, as we'll see momentarily. They say all of these groups are working in service of the religion. Well, this is in clear contradiction to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is in clear contradiction to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Clear narrations from the sunnah. Clear ayat from the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And still we find those ikhwan who contend. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for thabat, ya ikhwan. And then the shaykh he continues. وَزَّعَمُوا أَنَّ الْجَمَاعَاتَ الْكَثِيرَ الَّتِي فِي السَّاحَةِ تَتَعَاوَنْ فِي خِدْمَةِ الدِّينِ وَفِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ مع أنهم قد وقعوا في مخالفة أمر الله بالاجتماع والنهي عن التفرق. 
And they claim, these individuals, Ikhwan, in these different parties and groups and schisms, they allege, they claim in these many groups that are out there that they are cooperating in service of the religion. Do we not hear this, Ikhwan, from the people? Claiming that they are working in service of the religion. Look, Ikhwan, no further than the modern-day Sufiya, Sufiya al-Asr, as Sheikh al-Albani so correctly named them, the Jama'at al-Tabliq. Look at these individuals, Ikhwan, who have opposed the very sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Brother Ikhwan have opposed from the kitab of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the tawheed of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As Shaykh Ahmed Najmi clarified, Ikhwan, from them, Ikhwan, those who, who supplicated at the graves. And the likes of this Ikhwan, but if you come. But these individuals claim that they're going out in Joel of 40 days and the likes of this in what? In service, they say, of the religion. This is what they claim. They claim to be doing this in the service of the religion. You find this ikhwan from the likes of the Quran Muslim and other than from these deviant sects. Ikhwan, all of them claiming what? That they are doing these affairs of innovation and deviance in the name of Islam in service of the religion. When in reality they have opposed the very kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the very sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are in opposition. They are in clear opposition to that which is so clear even the awam can understand it. Those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided. As for some of these ikhwan dakatira, some of them have doc doctorate degrees, ikhwan, and they can't understand a simple principle like holding on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did 10 years in the university benefit them? What did it avail them? What did these high degrees that sit on their walls, what did it avail them? If they can't understand a simple concept like, وَأَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا can't understand a simple principle like hold on all of you together to the rope of Allah, the book and the sunnah. What did the, the degree avail them, Ikhwan? The Shaykh, he mentioned that to this Ikhwan. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He says, Even, فالجماعات الموجودة في الساحة مضادة لهذه الآية الصريحة وهذا ما يريد مؤلف بيانه عندما قال and then he goes on to mention it. He says, all of these groups that are present now, out here today, they are in opposition to this clear verse in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the author intends with his statement. This is what he intends with his statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded with unity in the religion and has prohibited differing therein and has clarified clearly, has clearly clarified this affair and so even the common folk can understand. And then the Shaykh, he mentions, Ikhwan, al-awam al-ladhina salimat fitruhum min al-tashweesh. And this is a very important point. He says, Ikhwan, those common folk who their fitr, yani fitr, yani their natural disposition that Allah created them upon, has not been corrupted by confusion and distortion. And this is important. For some of the people, Ikhwan, have this misunderstanding, this misinterpretation that there's somehow, Ikhwan, that a person from the common folk can't be a person of innovation. What did Shaykh Wana Shaykh Rabi he mentioned? Hafidhahullah Ta'ala, Ikhwan. He said, You find many of the people of innovation today, Ikhwan, from the common folk, Ikhwan, you find them from the soldiers of innovation. You find them, Ikhwan, those who support innovation with their wealth. You find them, Ikhwan, those who support them with their material means and the likes of this, Ikhwan, from the common folk. Allah be fikum. Waging war against Salafiyah and the people of Salafiyah, from the common folk, Allah be fikum. So when he mentions here, Ikhwan, Allah be fikum. He clarifies and gives us yani, a specific affair here when he says, those who their fitr the national disposition that they were created upon, is free from a tashweesh confusion, وتهيج, distortion. يعيشون بعيدا عن هذه الانتماءات والجماعات يفهمون هذه المسألة فهما واضحا لا لبس فيه. And then he says, Ikhwan, لبرفيكم, these individuals, they are far they are distant from these groups and these parties. They are the ones who understand this principle. They understand this principle clearly without any confusion. No confusion whatsoever, Ikhwan. And then the Shaykh continues. And he prohibited us from differing like those who came before us. And he says, من اليهود والنصارى from the Yahud والنصارى الذين افترقوا إلى فرق and from those who divided into 
groups and schisms. We know that from the, the narration that we mentioned earlier from the splitting of the Ummah. And he said that to this Ikhwan, Sheikh Muhammad Aman al Jami, Rahimahallah Ta'ala, وَقَدْ بَيَّنَ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم إِنَّ هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ سَتَحْذُ حَذْوَ الْيَهُودِ وَالنَّصَارَ فِي التَّفَرُّقِ And he mentions, Ikhwan, Allah ibn Rafiqum, that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has clarified that this Ummah would follow, would imitate the disbelievers even in the affairs of division and separation. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, of course, warned from that, Ikhwan, a tremendous warning. We continue. Sheikh Muhammad Aman al-Jami, he then goes on and he says, لما أخبر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بأن هذه الأمة ستفترق على ثلاث وسبعين فرقة فلا بد إذن من وقوع ذلك. Now this is a very important point, Ikhwan. He says that when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he clarified to the Ummah that it would divide into 73 different sects, it is a must, Ikhwan, that this comes to pass. This must come to pass. Now this, Ikhwan, is from the affair of the universal decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his irad kawniya, as we will see momentarily, Ikhwan, his universal decree. Some of the people have said, Ikhwan, we've heard from some of the deviant groups and the deviant scholars, they say these individuals, these, these Salafis, as they try to blame Ahl sunnah yani they are calling to division. They think that by mentioning this narration that the, the, the ummah would divide into 73 sects, that we are pleased with division. That we are pleased with division or that we are encouraging division or that we are calling to division. And we discussed that in the previous lesson last week. But the point here, Ikhwan, but if you come, is that these individuals, again, do not understand fundamental principles. Fundamentals as it relates to these issues. These affairs must happen as they are the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then the Shaykh, he says, وَلَا يَدُلُّ وُقُوعَهُ عَلَىٰ أَنْهُ أَمْرٌ مَحْبُوبٌ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ but this in no way means that that which is happening from division is something desirable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Allah does not love division. Rather, the punishment of that is what, as we see in the narration, that those 72 sects are where? In the fire. So clearly it is not desirable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah decreed it and allowed it from a tremendous wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Shaykh, he says, إِخْوَانَ كَانَ وَاقِعًا بِإِرَادَتِهِ الْكَوْنِيَةِ Even if it occurs due to Allah's universal decree. Meaning that which Allah decrees and allows to happen does not mean again that Allah loves it or desires it, but rather, إِخْوَانَ بِإِفِيكُمْ It simply means that Allah decreed it. And then the Shaykh, he says, إِخْوَانَ وَالَّذِي يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ هَذَا تَفَرُّقْ لَيْسَ مَحْبُوبًا عَنْدَ اللَّهِ And the evidence, the proof of that which Yani indicates that this division, this separating, is not desirable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, that all of those sects are in the hellfire except for one. That is the clear narration. Again, clear evidence, clear cut evidence, clear cut narration that establishes for us, Ikhwan, that this tafarruq is not mahboob in the law, that it is not desirable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنَّ كُلَّ تِلْكَ الْفِرْقِ فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا وَاحِدَ And all of them in hellfire itself are ones we mentioned. وَهِيَ الْفِرْقُتُ النَّاجِيَةِ And that is the saved group. وَهِيَ مَنْ تَمَسَّكَتْ بِمَا كَانَ عَلِيهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَصْحَابُهُ وَصَّبْرَتْ عَلِيهِ وَهِيَ الْجَمَاعَةِ And then he mentions again, يَا إِخْوَانَ لَا بَرِفِيكُمْ That that group is the saved group, those who cling firmly to that which the Messenger of Allah صلى الله this is the jama'ah. Now we know Iqwan from the tremendous narration of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, where he mentioned Iqwan al jama'ah ma wafaq al haq wa law kunta wahdak. That the jama'ah, the, the congregation, the body of the Muslims is that which is in accordance with the truth, even if you be by yourself. Even if you be alone. And this is important, Iqwan, that we understand. And this is not Iqwan just mere, yani a mere metaphor. This is not figurative. This is real, concrete. That the jama'ah ikhwan is the individual by himself if everyone else opposes him in that. Shaykh Wana Shaykh Rabi Hafidhahullah Ta'ala, he made a tremendous point, ikhwan. He said, if you were to take a village or a township or an area, ikhwan, and there were a thousand people in that area, 
999 of them upon innovation and one of them upon the sunnah, that individual upon the sunnah is the jama'ah. And if you would have found another place, Ikhwan, where there were a million people, and 999,000, 999 of them, Ikhwan, were upon innovation and evil, and only one of them was upon the sunnah, or two of them upon the sunnah, then that one or two, they are the jama'ah. That is what we understand, Ikhwan, from the affair of unity. How many times have we said, Ikhwan, there is no such thing as unity for the sake of unity? People claiming that they are together, that they are united. When in reality, Ikhwan, as we mentioned in the, in the, in the previous lesson last week, Ikhwan, their intentions, their, their, their aims and their goals, Ikhwan, are different. And the only thing that brings them together, Ikhwan, is their hatred for the people of Haq. The hatred for Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So you'll find Ikhwan, the, the Mumayyir, and you'll find the Haddadi, and you'll find the Shi'i, and you'll find the Yani, Yani, the, the Nasi, but you'll find all the Ikhwan united in one affair, the animosity and the enmity for the people of truth. But do not think for a second that these individuals together, تَحْسَبُهُمْ جَمِيعٌ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ شَتَّى How many times have we mentioned the verse in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You reason, you think, you believe that they are united, but their hearts are scattered. Their hearts are all over the place. Their hearts are divided. And that is because they are people, Ikhwan, who do not reason. What did Qatad say? Qatad, Ikhwan, as At-Tabari mentions in the tafsir. He said, you find the people of innovation, you find the people of desires, diverse in their creed. You find them, Ikhwan, diverse in their aims. You find them diverse in their actions. But that which unites them, Ikhwan, is their animosity and the enmity for the people of truth. And what you also have to understand from this Ikhwan is it does not matter if a million of them gather together, they are not uniting, they are separating from the jama'ah. That is separation with their numbers. That is separation. Unfortunately, Ikhwan, some people have the misunderstanding that because there are a thousand people in a room, that they are together. But that is not the case. Unity is only by unification upon the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that those two individuals amongst that thousand, we talk about that thousand people in that village or that hamlet or that township, a thousand of them, Ikhwan, 998 of them upon innovation, two of them upon the sunnah, the two upon the sunnah, they are upon unity. And the 998 are upon separation because they have separated from the jama'ah. They have divided from the jama'ah. So they are those who separate. So don't be fooled, Ikhwan, by those individuals who talk about people dividing and separating and the likes of that. And we talked about this last week, Ikhwan, as it relates to their argument that the Salafis divide, and we clarified this. Divide families and the likes of this, and we clarified this. Ikhwan, we are people who heard, hold firm to the sunnah, whoever it's for or against. We hold firm to the sunnah, ikhwan, al-barifikum. This is what we found from the companions. What did we find from Abdullah ibn Umar? When Abdullah ibn Umar, when his son, ikhwan, as the narration mentions, when he forbade his wife from going to the masjid, Abdullah ibn Umar mentioned the narration of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Do not prohibit your women from going to the masjid and their houses are better for them. His son said, well, I'm going to prevent her, based on Yani's understanding of what was going on at the time. What did Abdullah ibn Umar say? I'm going to not talk to you until I, till I die. That's his son. That's his son. But he took a stance based on the kitab and the sunnah. What about the narration of Abdullah ibn Mughaffal, the noble companion of the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when his cousin was throwing stones, his cousin, his relative, was throwing stones. And Abdullah ibn Mughaffal said what to him? He said, verily the Messenger of Allah وسلم, prohibited the throwing of stones. Either you're going to put out somebody's eye or you're going to break somebody's tooth. His cousin kept throwing stones. What did Abdullah ibn Mughaffal say to his cousin? I'm not going to speak to you till I die. What about Ka'ab bin Malik, the noble companion Ka'ab bin Malik? Ya Akhwan Abedi Fikum. When the Messenger of Allah commanded the companions to boycott him and his two companions, in the well-known story of Tabuk, was it not his cousin in the narration, Ikhwan, his cousin who passed by, and it was mentioned that his cousin was a hab nas ilayhi, the most beloved of mankind to him? And when he gave his cousin salams, what did, what did he mention about his cousin? 
I didn't see his lips move. That's his cousin. They talking about dividing families. They don't know a thing about the Sunnah. They're devoid of one of these narrations. They've never read these narrations. They haven't heard these narrations. They haven't been given success to ufit ikhwan. But if you come to understand them and implement them properly, walhamdulillah ahlu sunnah ikhwan. We understand that this is the methodology of those very companions of the Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was their way. They took firm stances, ikhwan, even against those who were most beloved to them from their sons and their cousins. What ikhwan about, as we mentioned before, Ali ibn al-Madini, when they asked him about his father, what's the condition of your father, the narrator, Abdullah, what's the condition of your father? And he said, it's al-ghayri, as They said, no, we're asking you. They said, he said, Adha, deen Allah wa amruhu abi da'if. He said, this is Allah's religion, this is the affair of Allah, my father's weak. This is, these are the positions of the people of Sunnah. That's his father. God, that was his cousin. Ibn Umar, that was his son. Ibn Muqaffa, that was his cousin. How many more narrations can we mention, Ikhwan, Lebedi Fikum? We can bring narration after narration. We'll be here all night, Ikhwan, if we continue to mention the narrations of these tremendous stances and positions that we find from the noble companions. But yet these individuals, Ikhwan, don't understand this very basic, simple principle. Hold on all of you together to the rope of Allah. The kitab and the sunnah. That is the unifying affair in our religion. It is not a matter of unity for the sake of unity. Leave us with that kalam. This kalam is empty. Kalam farigh. It has no weight. La qimala. It has no worth. Unifying for the sake of unity. Rather, we unify for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We move on, inshallah ta'ala. How long we been going? How long? Khair, inshallah. We continue, Ikhwan. Well, that got and back to the Metin, Ikhwan, the text. Read along, inshallah ta'ala. وَذَكَرَ أَنَّهُ أَمْرَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بِالْإِجْتِمَاعِ فِي الدِّينِ وَنَاهَاهُمْ عَنَ تَفَرُّقْ فِيهِ وَيَزِيدُهُ وُضُوحًا مَا وُرَدَتْ بِهِ السُنَّةِ مِنَ الْعَجْبِ الْعُجَابِ فِي ذَلِكَ And he mentions, Ikhwan, Allah be with you, Furthermore, Allah mentioned that he commanded the Muslims to be united in their religion and forbade them from spitting. This is further clarified by the amazing narrations Found in the Sunnah pertaining to this. Shaykh Muhammad Aman al Jami, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentions regarding this point. In many narrations, many narrations, the Messenger of Allah commands with unity and urges. Unity. And he prohibits differing and dividing. And is warned against it. And there are many, as he said, there are many narrations in this regard. And then the Shaykh he mentions one that we've mentioned many times over the years. The statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inna Allah yaradha lakum thalatha wa yaqrah lakum thalatha. فَيَرْضَ لَكُمْ أَنْ تَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَأَنْ تَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعٌ وَلَا تَفَرَّكُوا وَيَقْرَهُ لَكُمْ قِيلَ وَقَالْ وَكَثْرَةِ السُّوَالْ وَإِضَاعَةِ الْمَالِ الله أكبر He mentions the Quran in this tremendous narration that Allah is pleased with three things for you. Three things please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala release to you. And he hates three things for you. Ask those things that he is pleased with, and ta'abuduhu, that you worship Allah, wala tushriku bihi shay'a, and that you do not associate any partners in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ta'atasimu bi hablillahi jami'un wala tafarraku, and that you hold on all of you together to the rope of Allah and not divide, and not be divided. This ikhwan coincides with the very ayah 
in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we mentioned previously. And also he mentions in the full wording of the narration, that you advise those who have been placed in authority over you. That you advise those who have been placed in authority over you. Sincerely advise those who have been placed in authority over you. And he hates three things for you. He said, she said, and as the ulama have mentioned, ikhwan, or tail carrying as it is sometimes uh, translated, this ikhwan, is from the things that cause division. This is from those things that divide and separate. Rather, ikhwan, this is, Allah hates this for you. Allah hates this for us. An abundance of questioning and squandering wealth. And then the Shaykh mentions Ikhwan Hadith Sahih Mu'ayyid al Ayat al Sabiqa. Again, a clear narration. Hadith Sahih that again coincides with the narration that we, or the ayah, excuse me, that we mentioned previously. For Kitab was Sunnah Ijtama al Al Amar, Bil Ertisam, Bil Ittihad, Bil Nahi and Atafarruk. So both the Quran and the Sunnah Ikhwan command with unity and togetherness and prohibit differing and dividing. And by the way, Yaqwan, that narration that we mentioned previously, Allah ibn Afikum, was collected by Imam Muslim in his Sahih. Imam Muslim in, Muslim in his Sahih, number 1715. 1715. Now, what I wanted to do, Yaqwan, Allah ibn Afikum, is bring some benefits from this narration. It's a tremendous narration, Yaqwan, so I, I wanted to take some time just to sort of delve into some of the fawa'id. Uh, I want to start, Yaqwan, with reading from the Isnad and making some points about the chain of narration. Again, this, uh, uh, Ikhwan, it, it, it marvels me how this, how this deen was preserved by the scholars of hadith. The science of hadith is a science, Ikhwan, is an ilm. Allah be So he mentioned the narration, Haddathini Zuhair ibn Harb. Again, this is Imam Muslim, Haddathini Zuhair ibn Harb. Zuhair ibn Harb related to me. Haddathina Jirir. عن سهيل عن أبيه عن أبي هريرة قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الحديث. So after mentioning the chain of narration again, it is Imam Muslim says that Zuhair ibn Harb related to me, and he said that Jirir related to us. On the authority of of Suhail, on the authority of on the authority of his father, on the authority of Abu Huraira, and then he brings a narration. Now I want to read now with Juan from the benefits from the explanation of the Sahih of Imam Muslim by the noble scholar Muhammad Ibn Ali Ibn Adam al Ethiopi, rahimahullah ta'ala in his explanation of the Sahih of Imam Muslim and again I'll, I'll mention the reason why I wanted to point out these benefits he says as for Jirir his name is Jirir Ibn Abdul Hamid Abu Abdullah Al Kufi he says Abu Abdullah Al Kufi Thiqatun Sahih Al Kitab and he trustworthy. And then he says, Ikhwan Suhail ibn Abi Salih, Abu Yazid al Madani. Now, this is important. Abu Yazid al Madani. Again, Suhail ibn Abi Salih, Abu Yazid al Madani. What does it mean when he says al Madani? He's from al Medina. He's from al Medina. Note that. that is, that's a point that we'll come back to momentarily. Saduqun taghayyira bi akhirihi. He was truthful, but his condition changed. Yani at the end of his life. Yani so when he became old, his memory perhaps went bad or like this, and therefore the narrations were unacceptable afterwards. Now this is important, again, one of the reasons I want to mention this, to show how the sunnah was preserved. This is a science, Ikhwan. So the ulama of hadith, they say, here's an individual, let's say, for example, before his memory went bad, before, for example, he had yani, uh, dementia or like this, that he was trustworthy. But then his memory goes bad. To show the precision of the scholars of hadith, they look at his condition, his circumstances. Everything he narrated before dementia, if it's under those correct uh, conditions, it's sahih, it's accepted. Everything after that, of course, is yani, rejected, not accepted, not accepted. Now the question I have for the audience is, well, what about if you don't know? What if you don't know the narration came before, his memory went bad, or after? What do we do with that one? Who said da'if? 
لماذا ضعيف؟ لماذا ضعيف يا أخي؟ ما رأيك؟ ما رأيك شيخ؟ لا اجلس يا أخي آه ما تكلم عن سنار آخر أتكلم عن هذا السنار ها ها الورا ما معنى نتوقف فيه ما معنى هذا يعني نتوقف فيه مصطفى وينك؟ ما معنى هذا نتوقف فيه؟ ايش القصد من هذا؟ احسن وي 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 دونت اكسبت وي سي اتس نوت اكسبتبل وي دونت نو كود هاف بين بيفور هيز ميموري ونت باد سو وي كان سي اتس ضعيف كود هاف بين افتر سو وي كان سي اتس صحيح سو ذا يفون نتوقف فيه ذيس از ذا بريسيجن اوف ذا ساينس اوف حديث يا اخوان ذيس از ذا بريسيجن اوف ذا ساينس اوف حديث Anyway, تغير بآخره. Anyway, his memory went bad towards the end of his life. Anyway, he narrates on his father, Abu Abu Salih Zakwan Samad Al Madani, also from Medina. ثقتن ثبت, يعني trustworthy, reliable. He's from the highest levels of authenticity in the science of hadith. On the authority of Abu Huraira, رضي الله عنه. Now, Sheikh Muhammad Al Ethiopi says, رحمه الله تعالى, listen to this, إخوان, أنه مسلسل بالمدنيين, that the chain has a series of narrators from Al Medina. Now, why is this important? Again, إخوان, this is to show the precision of the science of hadith. Why would it be important to show that there's a series of narrators all from Al Medina, or from Kufa, or from any place? Why would you think it would be important to note that? Nasruddin. They, they would know whether or not he was good or bad. Well, I'm saying in general, though. Outside just this narration. In general. Huh? So what's the benefit of that? We know that, right? We already said that. What's the benefit of it? Why well, mention it? Why is it noteworthy? Yeah, I mean, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, Mustafa. <laughs> MashaAllah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Isbir, isbir, yeah, isbir. So, I mean, I'll be with you, yeah, Mustafa. طيب واصل فهذا من من يعني شروط ماذا؟ ومسلم يا اخي طيب الله يبارك فيك for the rest of the brothers who didn't understand what he just said my next class is what Monday Monday. When we come back, I want you to come back. I want brothers to come back and be able to explain to me the benefit of having a series يعني, of narrators from the same place. Why is that noteworthy to mention that in a chain of narration? Homework. Inshallah ta'ala. So he says, إِخْوَانَ أَنَّهُ مُسَلِّسَ بِالْمَدْنِيِينَ غَيْرِ شَيْخِهِ Except for his teachers. So in the chain, there are those who are not from Medina. And he says, for example, his sheikh, he was Nisa'i. He was Nisa'i. And also Jirir and the chain was Kufi. So uh, some of them were not from yani Medina. And also in the chain of narration is the narration of a son on his father. Again, Ikhwan, the precision of the scholars of Hadith that they mention that because we also have the flip side of that. We have sometimes a father narrating on his son. Or we have a sheikh narrating on his student. We have a sahabi narrating on a tabi'i. The scholars of hadith have clarified these specific instances. Again, all of this shows us the great precision of the science of hadith. 
وفي أبو هريرة and also we said in the chain of narration is Abu Hurairah of course the companion أحفظ من رواه الحديث في دهره the one who memorized the most narrations of his time meaning from the noble companions of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم in the explanation of this narration إخوان محمد الذيوبي he says قال القرطبي القرطبي سر رحمه الله قالوا إن الله يرضى لكم ثلاثة as for a statement الله يبارك فيكم that Allah is pleased with three things for you أي شرع هذه الثلاثة وأمر بها that Allah has legislated these affairs and has commanded with them وجعلها سببا لكل ما عنده من الكرامة في الدنيا والآخرة and Allah has made them a means of nobility and honor in the worldly life and the afterlife for everyone who has these affairs from these three affairs وقال القرطبي رحمه الله also القرطبي said regarding this narration ويقرأ لكم ثلاثة and he is displeased with three things or hates three things for you وفي الرواية الأخرى يسخط another wording Allah hates three things for you A meaning نها عنها he has prohibited them وحرمها and he has made them impermissible and also إخوان he says it is a reason for إهانته وعقوبته في الدنيا والآخرة that those who fall into this affair of dividing and differing, it is from the means or the reasons of one's indignity and punishment in the worldly life and the afterlife. So those who fall into the division, dividing and differing and separating Ikhwan, they are from those who are punished in the dunya and the afterlife. وَهَذَا كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his Quran, وَلَا يَرْضَ لِعِبَادِهِ الْقُفَرِ And Allah is not pleased with kufr for his worshippers. وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَاهُ لَكُمْ And if you are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be pleased with you. Look at this. Look how the ulama have, yani, yani, bring this together. Allah is not pleased that you commit shirk, that you commit kufr. But he is pleased that you are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what, are, what is one of the ways that you can be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ya Ikhwan? Huh? Nah, there's a young brother here. What's a way that you can be thankful to Allah? Huh? He said, okay, okay. Ah, Labas. Ah, mashallah. No, you're right. You be thankful to Allah for food. Ahsent, ahsent, ahsent. Excellent answer. What was my question, though? Alhamdulillah, brother, alhamdulillah, he marveled me, mashallah. Huh? Hey, he likes us to be thankful. Nah, he's pleased. Nah, mahsin. He's thankful that we, that we يعني, are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we display our thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's the question. By ibadah, by worship, ahsin. We find it. What's the evidence for that? He said that bold, so I got, now I got to get some evidence from him. He was, he was bold in his answer. Huh? What's the, what's the, what's the verse? Do we not find in the Sunnah that the message? Tawbah. You know, you heard what I was getting ready. You know what I was getting ready. <laughs> Go ahead, give me, give me the narration. Ahsan. Allah Akbar. Allah. He mentioned Ikhwan that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, Ikhwan, in the narration he was praying so much at night. He would pray so much and for so long that his feet would crack or swell up or like this as the narration mentions. And when Aisha, she saw this, she asked the Messenger of Allah وسلم, وسلم, why do you yani, exert yourself in this way when you are one who your past and future sins are forgiven? He said, should I not be a thankful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Thanking Allah by praying to his feet swelled up. That is thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the ways that one thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being truthful until the end of that. And he says after this ikhwan wa habla Allah huna and he says the meaning of habla Allah shara'uhu alladhi shara'uhu it is the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa dinuhu alladhi irtada and it is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is pleased with. Again from the kitab and the sunnah. And qala qatad as we mentioned from the tafsir qala qatad huwa al-Qur'an Qatada said, what is intended here is the Qur'an. And then he said after this, إِخْوَانَ وَمَعْنَ هَذَا 
أن الله تعالى أوجب علينا التمسك بكتابه وسنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم الرجوع إليه ما عند الاختلاف. And he says, Ikhwan, and we'll end on this point and pick back up. No, no, we'll finish a couple more points. How much time we got? We got been an hour. Okay, inshallah. We'll finish this uh, a couple of points, Ikhwan, and we'll adjourn. He says, Ikhwan, that what is intended here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is obligated clinging to his book and the sunnah of his prophet وسلم, and returning to them when one differs. We have a remedy, ikhwan. We have a makhraj min al-fitna. We have an escape, a way out from fitna, ikhwan, from tribulation. When we differ in the religion, we return to the book of Allah and to the sunnah of his messenger وسلم. That is the remedy, ikhwan. That is what we have been commanded with in the book of Allah. And in the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَقَوْلُهُ لَا تَفَرَّقُوا And as for a statement, do not divide a اجتمعوا عَلَى الْاِعْتِصَامِ بِالْكِتَابِ وَالسُنِّ اِعْتِقَادًا وَعَمَلًا فَتَتَّفِقُوا كَلِمَتُكُمْ And then he said after this, ikhwan, meaning, do not divide, meaning, unite together <coughs> upon the book of Allah <coughs> and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, اِعْتِقَادًا in creed, in your belief, وَعَمَلًا and your actions, your belief, and your actions. Therefore, he says, kalimatukum, And therefore, your word will be one. When you unite upon the kitab and the sunnah, ikhwan, your word will be one. Shaykh Muna Shaykh Muqbar, rahimahullah ta'ala, how many times did he say to us, ikhwan, that if you were to take a Salafi in yani, China, or a Salafi in Spain, and they are upon the kitab and the sunnah, if you ask them a question in the affairs of creed, you're going to get the same answer. Never met. These two individuals never met, never, never crossed paths, eyes, never laid eyes on one another. But you ask that Salafi in, in Spain, you ask that Salafi in Idaho, you ask that Salafi wherever he may be, something about the affairs of creed, belief, and he's upon that which is correct, they're going to say the same thing. Even if their paths have never crossed, Ikhwan Abed Afikum. And this is the tremendous affair of being upon the Kitab and the Sunnah. Finally, Ikhwan, from the fawad of this uh, narration, Sheikh Muhammad al Yupi, he says, أن الله تعالى يحب من عباد الإخلاص في عبادته في التوحيد. He says that Allah subhanahu wa taala loves sincerity in worship as in the affairs of the tawheed. وسأل العمال and other than that from actions كلها التي يعبد بها all of the actions or every act of worship that one does to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And finally, the second benefit الحظ على اعتصام. وَتَمَسُّكْ بِحَبَ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَ فِي حَالِ اجْتِمَاعِ وَإِتِلَافِ And the strong encouragement to hold on all together to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the affair of unity and togetherness. We'll end here inshallah ta'ala ikhwan and we'll finish up the point in our next lesson bi Allah ta'ala. Don't forget you have, yani wajib, you have homework inshallah ta'ala wa ta'ala. Wa jazakum Allah khairan.